welcome back to Bike Bike Nudge Nudge and my second of probably three videos on my experiences riding my bike in China. Please consider subscribing so that you don't miss when the third video comes out. In the first video, I talked about the bike infrastructure I saw while there. In this video, I'll talk about all the different types of vehicles I saw in China. If you haven't seen the first video yet, I was in China in the summer of 2024. All the videos in this episode were taken in three cities, Shanghai, Hefei, and Wuchong. For those that don't know, Shanghai is the most populous city in China with an official population of 25 million people. Hefei is the capital of Anhui province and has a population of 5 million people. Wuchong is also in Anhui and is a small town by Chinese standards with a population of 200,000. Let's talk about all the different bikes and trikes I saw while in China, but first I want to mention the cars and trucks. In China, most people drive sedans. Urban areas are dense, so just maneuvering as well as parking can be difficult. Also, there's an extra 10% tax on any vehicle with an engine displacement over 1.8 liters. When I was previously in China 14 years ago, Volkswagen seemed to be the most popular brand of car. During this trip, there were many Chinese car brands on the road, and I didn't see nearly as many American or European brands. The other thing I noticed was how many cars were plug-in hybrid electric vehicles or fully electric vehicles. Some long-term viewers of this channel might be shocked to hear me actually saying the word car. I've had a few commenters complain about me calling everything in North America an SUV. It's good to know some people are paying attention to the language I use on this channel. For China, I will say car because SUVs are a small minority of the vehicles on the road. As I previously mentioned, vehicles with a large displacement engine pay an extra tax, so SUVs are mostly a status vehicle in China. In North America, there are mostly no extra fees for large vehicles, and the US's stupid CAFE standard loopholes make SUVs more profitable for manufacturers. The type of vehicle you're not seeing in my video from China is pickup trucks, and that's for a few reasons. First, as already mentioned twice, trucks will be subject to an extra 10% purchase tax due to their large displacement engines. Second, governments ban them from urban centers because they're big and impractical in dense urban environments. And third, they're seen as a vehicle for farmers, so they're only for low social status people or people who legitimately need a truck. It seems fewer people in China want to pretend to be a farmer or a rugged work dude. And I didn't see any of the other truck bro archetype, the sociopath. All the trucks I did see had some sort of government or corporate branding on them. If you actually need a truck in China, you probably have one of these blue trucks. They're cheap and actually practical for industrial uses. Okay. I didn't mean to talk so much about cars. I'm worried about increasing car dependency in China, but it was refreshing to at least see practical vehicles on the streets, and so few of the ridiculous, bloated SUVs and trucks that are on North American streets. Let's now talk about all the different bikes and trikes that are used in China. The first thing you'll notice is all the mopeds and that they're all electric. Mopeds are everywhere, and I'm thankful for that. If there were no mopeds, I think a lot more people would have shifted to cars by now, so there would be a lot fewer bike lanes. I'll get more into what it feels like to ride a bike in China in my next video, so for now, I'll just say it wasn't a problem to share bike lanes with mopeds, because mopeds seemed to be limited to 30 km an hour, which means the speed difference between them and me wasn't very great. Mopeds also make sense due to the higher density in the cities I visited. This is the satellite view of Sujing metro station. These are parked mopeds, and this is the rooftop parkade across the street. There are about six to eight mopeds parked in the same amount of space as one car. In addition, the space for access is much less. You would need a parking lot like a North American power center if all these moped riders drove a car instead. I prefer the mixed use and the ability to access areas like this by walking, biking, or taking public transit instead of just a few big box stores and a sea of asphalt. The higher density of people and stores also makes using mopeds for deliveries more practical than using a car. There were delivery persons on mopeds everywhere. This makes good sense with the rise of food delivery because why do you need a full-size SUV to deliver a DQ Blizzard? By the way, finding Dairy Queen in China was new for me this trip, and they deliver blizzards with packets of dry ice to keep them cold. Parking for pickup and delivery is also easier on a moped. At home, I often see cars parked illegally with the hazard lights on, while some delivery guys dropping off an order. In China, the delivery persons were all over in cities. They could park their mopeds very close to where they needed to be without parking illegally. There were delivery persons up on the sidewalk a lot, trying to get close to the destination, but 
there were a lot of other people on mopeds up on sidewalks trying to get close to their destination as well. Using sidewalks to park mopeds and bikes is very common in China. For the most part, the sidewalks are wide enough so people still have plenty of room to walk. Boxes have also been painted on the sidewalk to demarcate where mopeds and bikes must be parked and people tend to follow the rules. One thing I also noticed in China is the huge variety of bikes and trikes. They seem to come in all shapes and sizes and are used for many different tasks. Personal mopeds all seem to come with a second seat so you could carry a friend or a family member and they had enough cargo space for a grocery bag or two. Then there were all the industrial trikes. They were almost always painted blue, just like the trucks used for industrial purposes. They came in various sizes and some even had enclosures for the driver and or cargo. I often saw one type in the bike lane that was being used to sweep the lane and the sidewalk. I saw them being used to carry garbage. I also saw them being used to deliver mail and packages. The biggest thing to note is that by using these mopeds, people were able to get close to where they needed to be without taking up lots of space or needing large roads and parking lots everywhere. Don't get me wrong, there are lots of large roads in China, but people don't demand that they go right in front of their house just because they want convenient access with an SUV. I want to give one example of a novel use of a trike. The exterior of my sister-in-law's condo complex is being redone. Cement or mortar is needed. This little cement plant has been set up inside the condo complex. The plant is on a wide path through the complex, and since these wide paths are occasionally used by vehicles, a large cement truck can access the cement plant to make deliveries. However, a large cement truck cannot access most areas of the condo complex. These trikes are used to deliver cement from the cement plant to anywhere it's needed within the condo complex. And these trikes are electric, just like pretty much all other mopeds and trikes in China. Finally, I'll mention bike share. Shanghai and Hefei had two companies offering dockless bikes. They are the blue and yellow bikes you see on the sidewalks. They seem to popular and easy to use as you can check one out using an app on your phone. Bikes do need to be relocated or taken in for repair, which is done by, you guessed it, electric cargo trikes. This is different compared to my city. That's my look at the vehicles you'll find on the streets in Chinese cities. Car use is increasing, but cities are still designed not to be car dependent. Due to the density of people and destinations, it's quite convenient to use a moped, both for personal use and for a lot of commercial or industrial purposes. Probably the biggest thing is that nearly all vehicles are electric, which I think is helping air quality to be much better than the previous time I was in China. For my next video on China, I'll talk about what it feels like to ride in China, including commenting yet again on using GPS navigation apps. Thanks for watching.